can. I'm too nervous. <laughs> you come and say it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to <laughs> Morning Wood Acres Homestead. Today, I'm going to be making some homemade goat feta cheese. Background, my husband in the background, everybody in the background, because this house is usually chaos. You will need some little tiny measuring spoons, some cheese salt, a thermometer. I always have my little directions right here. And of course, you need goat milk and your, your bacteria cultures, which I have in the freezer, so I'll show those after. I've got my four liters of milk, freshly milked from our goat. Well, it's a couple days, but it's fine, it's still fresh. So I'm gonna pour all of these into my big pot. So we've got a full pot of milk now. Oh my God, they're wrestling me in the living room. We're just gonna heat up our milk until it says 37, 37 degrees. <laughs> I forgot you also need a slotted spoon. Very, very important. Okay, I have kicked my family out. Just being too noisy and I'm already overthinking this entire thing. Who knew making a YouTube would be this stressful? I don't know, why am I putting myself through this? I wanna share knowledge. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna check my Oh, I'm just gonna check out my milk and see if it's up to temperature or not. Our milk is to the right temperature. Ah, oh, family's back. <laughs> Got this one and this one. And I always keep them in the freezer. They just stay fresher. Sixteenth of a teaspoon. And you're just gonna sprinkle it on the top of your milk. Then you're just gonna leave it for a couple minutes and then we're going to gently slotted spoon stir like this in the pot going like this is just too much you want to just gently mix it i just wanted to share where i got my cheese making kit cheeseneeds.com and that's everything came with it that i needed so i got my thermom my bacterial cultures my salt my directions and of course my rennet. So funny, I was actually going to cancel doing this video. I was like, screw it, I give up, I can't do it. I'm just gonna go for it. This is my first one, I'll get better with time. I'm not even looking at the right spot on my camera. There's my husband. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to hold my camera right here so you can see how I'm mixing. And I've just moved it off the burner and I'm just gonna put a lid on it and a towel over top and we leave it for 45 minutes okay so it's been about 45 minutes put three tablespoons of distilled water in here or non chlorinated water so I'm just gonna use my well water add a quarter teaspoon of rennet to the water give it a little whoosh give it a little whoosh and then we're gonna stir, use that cheese making stir that we learned earlier. I'm still not looking at the right spot on the camera. I keep looking at myself instead of there. Oh, this is so much harder than I thought. So this is calf rennet. I didn't know what calf rennet was until I started making cheese. It's a little bit gross. Apparently this is how the cheese to cheese. Calf rennet is an enzyme that is in the stomach. This is how we're making the cheese. We've got our three tablespoons of non-chlorinated water. I always keep this in the fridge too. Really cute, these little measuring spoons. This one says tad, some of them say pinch. Let's give it a little mix. Take the lid off, gently pour it into our milk mixture. And then the cheese stir. It's quite the process because now we gotta wait another 45 minutes. Once I tried to rush this though and do it all at once, not a good idea. Sit around for a couple minutes, really good and stirred. And put the lid back on and a towel over top. And we do not touch it. <coughs> do not open it. Do not bump it. Do not touch it. It will wreck it. Okay, moment of truth. 
It has been about 50 minutes. I'm gonna take the lid off. <laughs> it worked. Oh, it looks a little different. All right, so that's what it looks like. Not quite sure why it has little swirls in it. That has never happened before. We're going to take a knife like this and we're going to be making like checkerboard cuts this way and that way. So again, I'm not quite sure why there's weird swirls in it. We're just gonna cut it across. I mean, it feels fine. Then we're gonna cut it this way. Okay, and we're gonna leave that for about five minutes to let it rest. There's one more step, can just cut it on like diagonals all the way. It's all just like little chunks of cheese. And now we're gonna scoop it. Okay, I don't know if that's gonna work. I have a water bottle and I have it jammed. Anyways, it's, it's, okay, so here's my bowl. I'm gonna just bring my pot over here while I'm scooping it. So I'm just pulling it across and scooping it. There's our cheese curds. You can salt it as you're going along. It might just salt it after once I, once I've got it in its slabs. We're gonna hang it up on a cupboard overnight and let it drip over a bowl. Make sure you don't waste your whey. You can give it to your chickens, you can throw it in your compost, you can give it to the dog. We actually give it to the dog because she loves it and it's a nice treat for her. So this is what it looks like when it's like separated from the whey. So I've now taken my cheese that's been hanging overnight and I've just sliced it up and now we're just gonna leave it again for the entire day just covered in plastic and a bunch of the whey is gonna come out of it so you'll want to dump it out 